There's another one, Shinsha man, selling out all of the government reserve. She's at, there at the land and there at the land and survey in, in Bartico, selling out all of the government reserve. And so it's very difficult for me to get into a technical defense of the budget when all we are hearing is cronyism, racism, spending too much on capital, um, not spending enough on people. It's a budget for bourgeois. The government is going around the place buying awards for the president so that he doesn't look racist. They just went and bought an award in Ghana. They bought the award, they paid the people $21 million. Now these Indians are part of our country too. They deserve to get contracts. They deserve to have their businesses. But we deserve equal treatment and equal rights every time. This is Miss Jamima Glasgow. So we're going to talk about the money. He's at, at the council in Bartica there, Jamima Glasgow. So I made the post yesterday. And surprisingly, because normally when I make posts about people, they don't reach out. But surprisingly, Miss Jamima reached out to me. Um, not to deny any of the claim, but to ask me to remove the post. Um, because it, you know, it has done severe damage to her reputation. So I said, Jimena, of course, I have no problem removing the post. If you could prove to me that what I'm saying is not true, it's a lie, you don't have a duplicate receipt in your office. So this is what Jimena does. So Jamima makes have a personal receipt book in her office. So let's say somebody comes in and pays seven hundred thousand dollars to use an excavator. Jamima writes the receipt and gives them the receipt for seven hundred thousand dollars from her personal receipt book. Then she goes and uses another receipt and writes a hundred thousand dollars. So basically, the council is basically getting a hundred thousand dollars. She keeps the rest of the money. She has a duplicate book, right? All the transactions are being done in her office. She giving the receipt and she collecting the money. Then she writing her own receipt for the council. She writing her own receipt and then giving it to them. So, so Jamima have been doing this for a while. And somebody and one of the one of the council said that they don't understand that she was caught before doing this and they don't understand why she's still there. So I'm gonna say this, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy, easy. I have all the receipts. You can um, run the receipt, the, other, the rest of the receipts that I have. All of these are receipts. All. All of this, Those are, these, are just, these are just some of the receipts that I have. Can't show all, these are just some of the receipts. But if you look at the, you see, the Marion Town Council of Bartica, if you check the receipt and you compare the receipts that she would have given these people that come to what, where they do excava um, excavator rental and all these things. So these receipts are usually entered into, they gotta enter it into the daily sheet, all right? And, and from, with the dates, then the bank statement, because they have to make a deposit of, at the end of the day. The council, like she usually go make her a deposit at the end of the day to the bank. And then they have a town council receipt. The town council receipt is the one where she has a personal receipt book, where she writes her own personal receipt. And in the town council receipt, she writes another number. So if you pay her 700,000 for the town council, the original town council receipt is gonna be $100. So if you call back those customers, you call them. It's easy to trace. This is public knowledge. This is public knowledge. What is the opposition doing? This is public knowledge. This is public knowledge. How can you guys just sit down and allow people to commit these criminal acts and, and involve in all these corruptions and all these things and just not say anything or do anything about it? It is so, so easy. Could Y'all yeah, don't sleep tonight. Could a council, one of the council, because any of the council could go and ask for an audit at the bar ticket office. Just go and tell her you'd like to see the books. It's simple. 
and ask the persons that have been giving her money. If, listen, you know what? You don't even need to ask the council. Let me send you the receipts that some of the customers receive and the date. And it's simple. You just go back in the book and you check and you see if the numbers match. You will see that none of the numbers match. For this 700 and something, $750,000 in particular, I know for sure, the original receipt that is in that is in at the Bar Ticket Town Council, the original receipt that is in that book that, that, she, that she would have given is $100,000. And she has been doing this for a while. I don't understand why, do, why, this, why, why, why is the opposition just sitting and allowing these people to get away with these things? If I can, if I can, if I could get these receipts and I can tell you how to go and find out what's happening, then y'all can do it. Another one, Shane Shaman, selling out all of the government reserve. She's at, there at the land and there at the land and survey in in Bartico, selling out all of the government reserve. Now, if this is not something for persons to really look into, no. Before you say, oh. Why are you there foreign? They ain't got nothing to do with you. Well, it's affect persons who so called migrated to other parts of the world. It's affect we very much. I want to tell you why it's affect we very much. Because at least I can give you a rough average. Let me say at least 70% of the persons that migrate always got this conversation. But I can build a house and I can come back home and get a piece of property and I can come back home. Everybody that migrate is realized there's no place like home. There's no place like Guyana. That's why when most persons migrate, they start rocking the flag more hard. They start trying to link up with persons from the diaspora, link up with persons from the Caribbean, link up with persons from the country. Because you start to realize that there's just something that is golden, there's just something that is harmonizing with your energy when it comes down to your people. So you always wanna come back home and you, wa and you wanna have your own place. You don't wanna have to rent you don't want to have a situation where you got to pay all them type of money to somebody just because you want to get property to enjoy your life and to live comfortably in the country in which you were born. This situation really needs to be rectified. And everybody could agree that everybody deserves a place to live. Everyone deserves a place to live. And they don't deserve to pay extra just because they want to do so. Just because they want to farmland. Just because they want a car in a space. Just because they want a particular lot. They got to pay extra. Or because of whatever other reason. Whoever might decide. Allegedly. Melly Mel bring the receipts as usual. In this next one. Sora Jagdeo giving a grade. Giving a grade to the opposition for the budget critique. He's saying after analyzing their presentation, this is the grade that he has to give them because he's saying that he don't know if they're really taking it seriously or they're playing around with their presentation. So this is the grade what Sora Jagdeo gives them. What y'all think? Y'all think is a fair analysis by Sir Jagdio, he might not be in his class, he might not be their teacher, so he might not be able to grade them. Y'all think Sir Jagdio is being fair in, in his analysis? Let's get into his analysis right now. I was expecting by today that there would have been more profound analysis of the budget and uh, those preliminary reactions from the opposition after the budget presentation, after the budget presentation, would have been, um, would have evolved into a more studied approach. Um, needless to say that I'm very disappointed that that did not happen, but I think most people in this country expected 
the initial reactions of the opposition to remain the main criticism of the budget. And so it's very difficult for me to get into a technical defense of the budget when all we are hearing is cronyism, racism, spending too much on capital, um, not spending enough on people, it's a budget for bourgeois, nothing for poor people. This is the usual sort of thing. It's a lazy approach to budget and it's, as I said before, it's predictable rhetoric and it represents the hollowness of the opposition's analytical capabilities and also it exposes their inexperience of, in terms of the budgetary process. I, I sought an explanation in for this bare-bone sort of approach and criticism of the budget in the composition of the, the team that they have in opposition. And when you look carefully at the team that they have on the opposition benches in the parliament, you would realize why they can go beyond that sort of sloganeering sort of criticism. Um, the simple reason is that none of them have participated in a, a very serious way in preparing a budget before. I don't think a single one of them has ever participated in preparing a budget. And secondly, 99% of them have never had any major policy experience. They were not, they never held positions where serious policy was discussed in the past. So this doesn't happen overnight. It comes with experience and it comes with also understanding the nature of the economy, the, the dynamics of the international community, and you have to craft a budget to address both variables. Your, the country's position in the world and its interaction with the rest of the world and the, the realities of the, the economy in Guyana and ensuring that the measures in the budget live up to those realities or take account of those realities. The, that is, we can't get that from this opposition. So we're gonna remain at the same sort of thing. Every, every day for the remainder of the budget, you will hear the same sort of criticism, nothing serious. Now, um, there are, however, a few things that are worth responding to. And they've come from some haters and some, some um, maybe who are seriously misguided. So, I saw an, a news story in the Kaichou News called Budget Diplomacy. And it spent, that news story spent a long time, or in a lot of words, criticizing Ashni Singh for speaking about a minimum now let's have that conversation in the comment section what do you think do you think sir jack the analysis was fair accurate unfair you even you even watch your budget in the first place you what if if you don't watch your budget you can't come and say oh the analysis was x y or z because you can't get your your arm your answer from nothing and just you know while wasting it so I got a couple lives on the channel. If you're checking the lives on the channel, the same channel you're gonna see, we got a couple of the budget videos. Check out some of them and then we have a conversation. 
in the comment section about it. What do you think? You think Sora Jack Dio analysis was fair? Leave it in the comment section. Mr. Burke is making some very serious allegations in this video coming up right here. We're going to let him tell you exactly what he needs to see right now. The government is going around the place buying awards for the president so that he doesn't look racist. They just went and bought an award in Ghana. They, they bought the award, they paid the people $21 billion. Shame! Shame! And I know the people of good people of Ghana have not lost their way that they are rewarding based on propaganda a racist president, a man who has apartheid policies that they have bought. My time is coming short, I'm not enough. But if you want approval of Aphrodite, why not start the poem? Why not get the approval of Afro guys at home? Why are you going and trying to take out the picture with the congressman? I want to say thank you to all the supporters of the channel. And for the 92% of the brand new viewers that come through. And you hit the subscription button yet? Hit the subscribe button, buddy. The content is only going to get better moving forward. I'm going to wait. Thanks. Fighting to take up the picture of a black head of state, and you're refusing to meet with the black leaders of Guyana since this government came to power. They have refused to meet with black leaders. They have arrested and charged all of the black staff, senior black staff, at the Elections Commission. Arrested all black ministers, former ministers of the government, black lawyers. How is that acceptable? Defunded Agda, defunded of Ipanaje, take away the funding for black organizations, cultural organizations. And you want to go to Ghana? Start at home. Start at home. And ask for an oil industry and the proceeds from it. Black people are not benefiting from it. Black people are not benefiting from it. How about starting there? We have to hammer the living daylight out of them for them to run and beg. No, let me take that back. For them to run and seek and form a black company to bid for an oil block. And it is good that those black women got, I want to see it materialized to production. I guarantee you that no PPP government will make sure that happens. That's a front. That's a front. I want it to happen. I want three more black organizations to build our blacks. If you take away the living from a black man with a small ad company, you owe you 170 million dollars, you break up the company. You will empower a black organization to own oil company. So I want it. But you know what? On the other hand, they're destroying all the black businesses in Guyana. If they perceive that you backing the opposition, your business is done. If they perceive that you back your report back, your business is done. I want to ask a question. How could we develop a country where Whenever the PPP is in government, nobody from the opposition must benefit from any government service. Nobody from the opposition must benefit from any resources of the country. How, how are we going to develop the country? And they can't deny that that's a fact. Yes, we have the empirical evidence. 90% of government contracts go to civilians. 2% go to blacks. The other 8% go international, and 90% of that 8% are Estonians from Trinidad. 
that is not an Ethiopian country. Black slaves built our country. They're standing on the shoulders of black, our black ancestors. Now the Indians are part of our country too. They deserve to get contracts. They deserve to have their businesses. But we deserve equal treatment and equal rights every time. So if we want to develop Guyana, we must first start with promoting equity, equal rights and justice, create opportunities for black businesses to grow and flourish, change the banking regulations, enact laws to ensure that there's equality. Don't complain that no black people say we racist. Do something about it. We want to empower the African Guyanese community and the oil that belongs to us. What part of the Guyana transports the oil that belongs to East India members of the PPP? What part of Guyana constitution says Barrage out their own the country? We want equality. And we can't get it under the PPP. The, PP, the People's Progressive Party government does not believe in equal rights for black people. It therefore means wherever they're in government, they are against our interests. So we, as black people, have to promote a government that promotes our interests, correct? And the only way we can have a fair share in Guyana's economy is by promoting a coalition government. Coalition government, shared governance. We, need, we deserve shared governance. What do y'all think about the uh, Burke dropping some bombs in this video, some bomb allegations? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. You think any of the things that he said is founded in the truth? Or all of this is just speculation by a person who went back to Guyana for a long time and don't really got much interest in Guyana other than making sure that he let his former teacher know how he feels about him. What are your perspectives? Do you think that it's something other than that? Let's have a conversation in the comment section because these things that he's speaking about are things that definitely would interest all adult minded Chinese. One love. I'll catch you in the next one. Verb. Wild crafted sea moss gummies. Nutritious, delicious superfoods. What's your favorite flavor?